up YouTube? It is Mr. Ferguson here once again. Thank you guys so much for coming back to another video here in Central North Carolina where we are striping our GCI Turf Type Tall Fescue. Jonathan Green back here. We got Triple Threat local North Carolina blend in our front lawn with a little bit of Jonathan Green Solar Green up front. We've been talking about possibility of Poa Triv being in the lawn. We're seeing lime green spots. As I look on Reddit, I'm noticing lots of people all over the nation are saying the exact same thing. So if you're in that category, do not fret. It'll be okay. And number one, it's just grass. We're going to survive. We're going to be okay. But uh, we'll touch on a little bit of that. I know I said that was going to be the last video. The last one was going to be the last one about Poa Triv. And technically, that's true. Uh, so we'll touch on that here in a second. But uh, today, guys, of course, if you're not subscribed, uh, consider subscribing to the channel. It's completely free. If you've been subscribed, if you want to get these videos early, earlier than we release them to the general public, uh, consider becoming a channel member. That totally depends. By the way, members, it totally depends on when I'm able to film. And if I'm able to get a video done early, I can get it out earlier. If I get it done late, sometimes we don't get it out. That's how that works. But the channel members that are already members can tell you I'm pretty good about getting most of them out to them early. So uh, that is one of the features of the Super Freak. So consider becoming a channel member if you're interested in that. So getting into the video. Today I want to talk about huge lessons I've already learned here in the 2022-2023 growing season uh, already. I've learned major things. I'm ready for next year already because I'm like, man, I wish I could go back and redo this and redo that. Before we get into those uh, those learning lessons that I'm, I'm speaking of, I want to just touch on the lime green spots. I saw somebody on Reddit, another user that's you know a lawn care guy. He said, that's not Triv, and it looks almost identical to what I have. He said, that's Poa Annua. It is a possibility that this is the young germinated Poa Annua that's not yet went to seed, and it's just beginning to sprout up, and the seed heads have not pulled up. So that's another option, and if it is, it's going to pop up everywhere and look like it's spreading, but it could just be those seed heads coming up so that is an option remember we talked about uh we read from the uh nc state turf files uh turf extension that when uh if you don't have your pre-emergent down by the first of september that's typically in north carolina when poa annual is already popping up and we were like crap we're doing our aerating and our pre-emergent here in the backyard september 16th so we're like 16 days behind the curve uh, we're late and so we were late on the pre-emergent back here and again i'm seeing the lime green in the front yard i'm seeing the lime green in the backyard there's not it's not because we didn't put pre-emergent in the front i'm seeing it at both areas so it is very possible that could be poa annual we'll keep you up to date we'll be able to see here soon because if we see those little seed heads i know exactly what that looks like you guys have seen the pictures in the backyard before we started this lawn project we had just a backyard full of poa annuals little seed heads everywhere and literally like 70 percent of this backyard was poa annual so if you've got a backyard full of poa annual like i did i'm telling you you can reverse it and of course we've talked about having a thick lawn to try to choke out the poa we didn't seed back here so again i'm learning that's one of the lessons so getting into what i was mentioning in the beginning of this video i've already learned some major things for next year number one we talked about it already but i want to re-emphasize this and i'm making this video possibly for future stephen ferguson um come you know summer of this upcoming year of 2023 depending on what the economy looks like depending what happens in the summer here in my lawn um, one of the major things two major things i wish i would have not done number one i wish i would have never ran that dethatcher through my front lawn that just that was a terrible idea. Um, so the first thing is it didn't need to be done. And if I had pictures, I'll show you here. It was, we, we made it through summer, the best I've ever made it through summer. I had deeply rooted, decent GCI turf in the front lawn. We had a little bit of that solar green on the bank and running that dethatcher like I did in the past was not necessary because we were in a totally different situation. I'd never been in the situation where I literally had 95% of my front lawn looked fine. Um, we had that area in the ditch. If you remember, we had those major be nuts edge or whatever it could have been that was an issue there sure run the dethatcher over that wasn't even necessary we could have manually raked that but i really regret doing that because it really damaged the lawn not so much you know hurt it but it did cause damage to the good grass that didn't need to be dethatched that was a dumb move um so looking back on that because i'd done it the previous two or th three years you know, I thought, well, this is my routine and it's work. So that's what I'm going to do. Not thinking that in the previous years, I've never had 90% of my grass survive summer. This was a first. So that was a mistake. So we're calling out mistakes, but we're also, well, that's basically what this is, calling out my mistakes. And number two, air rating. Um, you know, Alan Hain has talked about there's 
no substitution for mechanical aeration. I believe that. I, I don't have a lot of faith in the liquid aeration. I do believe the earthworms are great. We need to, you know, we need to have earthworms in our lawn. They aerate, they run through the soil, they cause holes, loosen compaction. That's absolutely true. So I do think aerating has its place. Definitely not in the spring, definitely in the fall. But uh, after doing it for three years, I shouldn't have aerated this year either. Some of that played in because Mr. Kevin wants to aerate and we had already agreed to it. So some of it was, well, I don't want to, you know, bail out on, on Mr. Kevin and make him do that on his own. And plus we had Mr. Brandon next door who wanted it done. So that was part of it. But really, I wanted to do it this year. So I can't say, well, they made me do it. That's not what I'm saying. It was more of I wanted to do it because that's my routine, just like the dethatching. So so aerating. Don't need to do that. Will not be aerating this fall. Again, uh, aerating period. It doesn't matter if our lawn gets completely wasted this year i will not be running that mechanical aeration through the lawn it can also by doing that we're exposing the dirt and we are bringing some of those poa seeds to the surface it's just it's going to happen um, unless we're putting down pre-emergent and again we missed it this year so that could be the aeration could be why we're seeing some of the lime green so really regret that number three we did the dethatching and aeration back to back. That's the first time I've done it that way because I was running late. And uh, even if our lawn needs to be dethatched because we lose, you know, through the heat, it's just a dry summer, can't water at all. We lose a lot of our backyard. We lose a lot of our front lawn. Even if I am saying, okay, in this case, we do need to dethatch, um, then we need to do that earlier. So let do the dethatching a week or so before seeding so it can recover. And I read that somewhere, um, but we need to run it. It's going to damage it a little bit. The Good grass the good grass is going to come back we need to water it let the good grass recover then we can go about seeding because we won't be running an aerator but if we are going to do dethatching and aeration we need to space those out that's the point i want to make space them out because the the the, uh, the dethatching can damage a little bit we want it to recover then doing the aeration can cause a little bit of damage and we want it to recover and by putting down seed or furt and RGS and all those good mixes, it can help it in that way. So that was number three. Um, so those are the main things, you know, is like, man, I really wish I would not have dethatched and aerated in the, the, the lawn this year. I really need to go forward uh, this upcoming fall. Um, I hope that I don't have to replant this fall. I'm anxious to see what happens here in the backyard. We didn't plant seed, it's thinner. So, <laughs> see it's it's i wish we had a good test because because we were 16 days late on the pre-emergent it would be nice to see okay because we didn't seed but we did do the pre-emergent when we were supposed to what does the poa annual situation look like you know but since we were late on the pre-emergent we can't really factor that in we were late so some of it's going to germinate between 1 september and through 16 september when we aerated and seeded so you have that window of time where the poa could have popped up all over the lawn we put down pre-emergent to hopefully stop some of it so that has a factor to weigh in so next year i'm anxious to see if we can keep the lawn thick and not lose a lot of it next year can we just do pre-emergent in our entire yard because that's what i should have done this year i shouldn't have went with seed i should have just done pre-emergent everywhere and uh see okay can we really knock out and stop poa uh, the other thing being with that dithiapir it's more it, it, people were right when they said in the comments dithiapir is more designed for crabgrass control in spring prodiamine is more useful in the fall and into the cooler seasons because it's more of a poa blocker than dithiapir they both could work but prodiamine is predominantly more useful in the fall so i would want to do my prodiamine app in the fall so these are just some of the things i want to remind myself when i get to uh, summer next year and think about what is our situation you can't just go off what you did in the past you know there's spiritual lessons there as well. You can't just do, well, this worked before, so I'm going to do this again. Well, our situation's different, Mr. Ferguson. We've got way more grass than we've ever had. Some of this grass has taken root in surviving the summer, and that could be due to the hydrotain, the watering through the summer, the RGS, the CK, the potassium that we've been putting down, um, the 0025 and things of that. Some of that grass is absorbing it and having deep enough roots to say summer's not going to kill me, and, there's, and it's surviving. So we're making progress each time we're reaping planning and come year four we had so much grass all we really needed to do was we didn't even need to really oversee the front yard it was more of you know our routine and our tradition and triple threat was something i wanted to try i wanted i've seen good things about it so 
Just wanted to make that video. I hope that makes sense. Leave your comments below what your thoughts are. I'm at, some of you are like, yeah, I've been saying that, but I was being nice to you, Mr. Ferguson, or whatever. It doesn't matter. I, I'm thinking to myself, man, now that I'm having to dig up some of these lime green spots, and I'm thinking, well, if this is Poe, I'm going to be digging spots everywhere. I'm done digging up the lime green. I don't really think it's Poe trivialis. It's not a, a, a splotch that just keeps growing and growing and growing. It's little lime green things everywhere and yeah i can walk through and i can pull but man there's some areas that are bigger and i think it's poa annual we're gonna see it's grass um it's gonna if it is poa or poa triv it's gonna come it's gonna be here in the winter and it's gonna die in the summer and we're, we're and hopefully we can survive with enough grass to do pre-emergent to block it all next year so taking it out and making it look good this year uh sort of kind of irrelevant we can yeah pull it it's gonna come back but if we do pre-emergent we're hopefully gonna block it from coming back next year that's the goal so again, and also doing potassium, if our pota doing soil test and seeing where are we at potassium wise, if, do we have stress relief for the winter? If you're up north, you got really cold temps coming in. Where's your potassium levels? You guys need to be doing soil test and seeing, you know, we want to make sure we have enough potassium in our soil. You know, where's our um, levels are micronutrients and stuff, you know, where's our iron levels as far as color and stuff. But mainly, you know, when, when being in North Carolina, I'm a firm believer. If I keep that potassium, you know, at a decent level, it is helpful. It's not the answer to everything. Water is a big answer, but potassium can be something that helps. So hope that makes sense. That's something I've already learned and regretted early into the season. We're just now in the mid, well, almost late October. So I wanted to make a video on that this Wednesday and share that with you guys, share your thoughts below. Um, it, it's kind of nervous because I've never seen, and I don't know if I've come out here and really uh, paid attention to the lime green spots the way I have this year. I can't remember. <laughs> I'm getting older. Um, but everything looks pretty decent. And then I'll be like, is that, you're starting to play mind games. Like I said last video, is that lime green? Is that, is that just a different cultivar? Is it the way the sun's hitting it? Or is that a weed I need to be pulling out? Oh crap, I need to dig that out or it's going to spread and your whole lawn's going to look... Calm down, Wusa. Pray, <laughs> honestly, Lord, help me to be wise and what I do in my lawn. And that's what I do. Seriously, it may sound dumb to you guys, but I pray and say, Lord, help me to be wise in the decisions I make. Do I need to be digging every single lime green spot, or just, Lord, help me to chill and it's going to be okay. So, anyways, hope that makes sense. Subscribe for more of these little tidbits of lawn care, what I'm going through, my journey. I mean, it looks fantastic. Even if we have a few little lime green spots, man, I'll just get out of the way and show you. Just look at that view. That is gorgeous. The way that the camera is catching that 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 left to, left to right mow and that right to left mow, it's I, I'm happy with that. You know, from the road, nobody gives a crap if I have lime green spots in my yard. They're they don't have anything. They've not planted anything. So just having this is we should be appreciative of what we have glass half full not empty right so god bless you guys thank you for tuning in this wednesday uh thank you for uh, uh subscribers and thank you for channel members i appreciate you guys obviously as i mentioned i didn't go on the trip out to ecuador so keep my father and them in prayer um they should be coming back this friday and i uh, hope everything goes smooth there i'm making this obviously ahead of time they just left today so keep them in your prayers and this new church that's going to be planted in ecuador and uh, for those that are believers in the lord jesus thank you so much for praying for them and mentioning them. God bless you guys. We'll be back Friday with another lawn care video here from Central North Carolina. I appreciate it. God bless. Have a great day. Yeah.